hey everyone so welcome back to the channel and in this video i'm going to show you how to add a robust authentication system to your angular application and as an example i finally added login flow to my angular dashboard and you can see that i have this nice login screen now i have two users that I, you can use to test when you click on login you're going to go inside the authenticated route which is the dashboard here now and if you try to go to the login again you're going to see that it does not allow you to which is exactly what you want you can do whatever you want here and then there's a nice icon here with your photo or the user's photo and you can click on it to log out okay and if you change for example your uh, user to something else you can now see that the other user is logged in here and then all of the other functionality remains the same if you log out you're going to see that if you try to go to the dashboard now it's not going to allow you in fact and in fact the default route is now going to be this login route okay so in this video i'm going to cover the first set of steps which is structuring your angular application which is adding some route guards some state to actually make the authentication flow work but the actual firebase integration i'm going to do in the next video so just as an aside this angular dashboard now this version with the firebase integration is available now on my angular store if you get it right now, you are going to also get all of the future updates to it at the same price. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do here is this is the version of our dashboard before the login flow was added. So you can see that it has just this dashboard and this layout, which is present. If you go in the code, it's present in the app component here. You can see here. So the app component is a root component in Angular. So all of our side nav, the header, all of our layout stuff is actually present in the app component. Now we need to remove this from the app component. And the reason is because we need to create a specific route for the login and the login does not need to have all of these things. So and the first step will be to create a separate layout component in which we can keep all of these layout stuff and then we can protect it and keep all of these dashboard and content and components basically a child of that layout component. Let's go on and first create a component here. So I'm going to do NGGC and I'm going to keep it in the shared components because the layout component is used by everything. So I'm going to keep it in my shared components folder. Now what we need to do is we need to shift all of our app component code into my layout here. Let's copy it in my layout here. In fact, let's split this up a bit and we can copy it around here. So we're going to copy this here and import all of the things that we want to import here add all missing imports okay and what's left is obviously our styles here so we can also copy the styles okay and the layout component code as well obviously okay so this seems to be fine so what do we keep in our app component then we're going to re remove this and let's also remove all of the styles because we don't need it and in the template we are only going to let the router outlet remain here because we want to show the rooted components here so we have we have a nice and easy simple app component now and we have a layout component which is separate from that all right so now what we need to do is we need to change our roots here okay so you can see that currently we all have just a flat routing structure here so we have our dashboard content components all on the main sort of hierarchy what we need to do is we want to make all of these dashboard content components actually a child of the layout component we are going to create a new path here and this path is going to be empty because we want it to be calculated based on the children's path and here we're going to do the load component we're going to do load component but instead of features we are going to do app shared components and layout component all right so this is going to do that and then this will have some children and obviously the children are going to be our existing paths here these are going to be our children here okay so let's put this inside of our children here so now the layout component has a router outlet inside of it as you can see here somewhere so this router outlet is going to be then containing all of these child components which is exactly what we want okay so now let's just test it out and see whether it works as before so if you go back to the app you can see that yeah it basically works the same but the structure has changed a bit okay so now we need to add our login uh, component here right besides this. So let's create a login component here. Let's do ngGC and uh, we're going to uh, put that into the features folder. 
And because it is a specific feature that we want to add, the login feature, and we're going to do features and login. Okay. So our login component is added. Now we need to generate some template or the, the login form for our purposes. Now, in this case, I'm not going to go through that in detail. You can use AI as well for the purpose because it's such a standard um, sort of a template or a standard HTML that you need to use. So I myself used uh, Cloud AI to generate that. You can use some other AI if you would like to. The prompt that I used was just to create a login form with the material form field and with Tailwind CSS as the styling. And that gave me quite a nice implementation. But then I changed it up a bit to actually uh, come close to what I wanted in terms of the styling and stuff. So here I'm just going to copy that, the final code here, so that you can actually see how that looks like. And you can see that it's just a standard login form with the sign up link at the top, which is not working currently, obviously. And then we have mat form fields for the email and the password. There's a hide password facility here to, to show and hide the password. So that's what came from the AI and I'm uh, going to use that. So let's see how this looks. Now to test this out, we're going to create another root here. And this is going to be the login root here. Okay. And let's do the load component and login component here. Okay. So I'm going to go and the dashboard remains the same. So you can see the login form looks great here like this. So this looks really nice here because I have also used some tricks that I uh, recently discussed in one of my videos to create sleek angular material forms. And um, I'm going to link it up in the description and also you'll find it up there somewhere. You can uh, refer to that video to uh, know what exactly I did to achieve this sort of compact angular material form look. Okay, so next we want to add some state to our application so that we can store the user information uh, of the currently logged in user. And then we can use it in various places that we need in our app. Okay, so to do that, we are using NGRX signals because we've already integrated it in a previous video, if you recall. So usually NGRX signal store is basically attached to a specific component. But in this case, because the login flow and the login state is basically a global information which you want to keep everywhere, we are going to create a global store using uh, NGRX signal store. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file here simply in the app folder here and we're going to do app.store.ts so we have an interface called user and we're going to add some structure here to our user so an email a name which will be a full name currently and then there we also wanted to have a string so this is your basic user structure here and then we're going to create our app state for this application store and you can see that it already gives us a way to do that and then we can do constant initial state app state and we are going to give an initial state of user being undefined okay because initially when there's no login or the when the user is not logged in it's going to be undefined okay so now all we have to do then is to do app store and this is going to be a signal store here from ngrx and the typical syntax that we use is that we do with state and initial state okay so this is just all you need to initialize a signal store, so nice and uh, simple. The one thing that we need to change to make it into a global store, because by default it's not, and that is we need to add this parameter provided in root in the first parameter of the signal store here, okay? So this is going to make the scope of this as global. There'll be just one instance of this signal store for your whole app, and we can access it anywhere in your application, okay? So we have our initial uh, state, which is undefined, and we have all of this. So what do we want this store to do? So this is going to contain our functionality for the login. So we're going to have a login function and a logout function. Okay. So let's add those two functions here. So we're going to do with methods. This is going to have our method. So we have our store here. Just going to do this, something like this. And then we can define our methods like this. So the first method is going to be the login method. Now currently we're not giving any parameters. We're going to add it later when we actually implement something like this. This is just a dummy implementation at this point. So for the login, what we want to do is we want to use the path state and let's also include this from here. So we're going to update the state and here we are going to just give some dummy values here. So I'm going to give user with the email of this name of this and the image of the as a profile pic that I already have of my own self. Okay, just to test things out. Okay, so we're going to patch this. So here we can we can actually just call the login function as well, which we're going to add implementation for later. So we're going to patch the state and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to 
called the navigate for the router okay now to add the navigate for the router we need to include that so we are going to include that in the methods here inject router we can inject any service here that we would like to okay and then we can just use the router.navigate and we can navigate to the dashboard route here all right great so this is our login function logout is really simple we are going to sort of call the function call the logout function for our real service that we implemented later then we'll have the path state and we're just going to make this user as undefined to clear the user and then we're going to navigate to the login page again okay nice and simple login and logout functionality implemented as a sort of a dummy implementation in your app store okay great so now all we need to do is we need to use this in our login component here going to inject our app store here so in the login form in this uh, login button we are going to uh, make this type as button so that we can avoid the refresh that we have with uh, type submit buttons and then in the click event we can do app store dot login simply here okay and let's test this out and see how this works so now we don't need to actually write in anything here we can just click login here and you can see that it goes to the dashboard now we need, do need to check what the state is so for that we are going to add a profile button here so that we can know that we have the correct user that we have logged in so let's go to our header component here which is our top level header here and here we are going to first of all inject our app store and then since we have the user user authentication stored there we can first check if we have the app store user here so if we have the app store user here we're just going to add a mat icon button but this mat icon button is not going to log out directly we're just going to add an image inside of this and so this image is going to be our profile image here okay so the source here is going to be your let's do this as user so we can actually access the properties of the user directly here so we can do user.image here and then we can do class sound it full to make it into a circle and let's give it a width of 8 and a height of 8 as well okay and also do object cover great so let's see how this looks now you can see that we need to go back and we need to set the state here to actually get the state again so we're going to click on login and when you click on login again you can see that we have this nice icon here now clicking on it should open up a menu so we're going to just quickly create a mat menu here at the bottom here so let's create a mat menu okay and in this mat menu we can just simply add a button here like this and then when you click that button it's going to call the app store.logout here as you can see we are going to name this as the profile menu here okay and then in this button we are going to link it using the mat menu trigger for here and we are going to do profile menu okay and here we have included the mat menu module as we should okay let's go back to our login and set the state that we have and you can now see that we have this state and now you click on the login button here you're going to go back to this okay just as an added touch i also want to add uh, an icon here and this icon is going to be the logout icon here okay so this looks better than it did before so now when you log in you can see that we have this logout icon here okay and it goes back to the login page so this flow works now lastly what we need to do is we need to protect our roots here okay so angular has a very nice feature called guards which we can actually add to any of our roots previously we had class based guards but they have been deprecated now and we can now just create guards very simply by using simple functions so let's create two guards which are going to handle this thing for us okay so we are going to create those guards in the shared folder in a guards folder here you can see like this and we are going to put them all related to the authentication in a separate auth.guards file so here for example the first guard that we want to create is that we want to protect our dashboard from not being accessed until the user is uh, logged in so how do we do that okay so let's create a function here we're going to uh, call this function as uh, very descriptive so that we know exactly what we are doing so we're going to call this as redirect login if not authenticated okay so if it, the user is not authenticated we want this guard to route every user to the login page first so this basically returns a can activate function all right it's a type of can activate function and this takes in the root the first root as a parameter okay so what do we know what do we need to do in this function so the first thing 
we need to do is we need to get the state of the uh, user authentication and we can get that state by using inject app store user here okay so let's add all the missing imports here and let's add a check here so if the user is false which means that the user is not authenticated we are going to return false okay so now false and true false means that it is not going to allow this route to be activated okay so we are going to put this on that specific route on the dashboard routes so but then what should happen when the user tries to access the dashboard route at this point what will happen if we just uh, use this functionality is that it's going to just stop there and do nothing we actually want to route back to our um, uh, login route as well so to do that can activate function guards actually allow you to return back a url tree as well to give a specific route to actually redirect to so in, instead of this false what we want is that we want to get the router here just by using the inject function again okay and then we are going to return router.parse url and in this we can give our login uh, route that we want all right and if for example the user is there then we are just going to return true here and that means that the user can access the dashboard okay so this is a redirect to login if it's not authenticated all right let's copy this and let's create another route let's call this redirect to dashboard if it is authenticated because if the user is authenticated we first want the user to log out and then he or she will be allowed to log in again otherwise he is going to be part of the main application which is the dashboard he should not be allowed to go to the login now if you don't want this feature you can skip this out but i'm going to keep it in all right so as you can see we have the user here again the router here again but if the user is false in this case or in fact if the user is true in this case so if the user is authenticated we are going to send the user to the dashboard so if the user tries to go to the login and the user is authenticated it's going to redirect the user back to the dashboard to tell the user that okay you are logged in okay great so we have these two auth cards which we can actually use now in our routes here so let's go to our routes and now because you want to apply the authenticated or the card which checks for authentication here in the layout we can add it to the parent component so that it's going to cover all of the children uh, of that route so this is one of the benefits of using this parent layout component that we added okay so we're going to do redirect to login if not authenticated let's add an import to this and let's use a function here like this and then for the login one we are going to do can activate redirect to dashboard if authenticated so now if you try to go to dashboard you're going to see that it's not going to allow you to go to the dashboard even if you go to an empty route here you can see that it redirects to the login why because the empty route here it directs to the dashboard which is fine if you are a normal user because the dashboard will be the most used thing it's sort of like the home page for logged in users only but if it's not here so it will go to the dashboard and it's not going to allow it here it's going to go back to the login here all right and of course it can't go it can't go to the dashboard directly as well here if you try to go to the dashboard directly here you can see that it goes to the login page again all right and when you click on login it goes to the dashboard you can see you are logged in go back to the login here by going back you can see that it does not allow you to go back and if you go to the login here it does allow you to go back because currently it doesn't the state is not persisted across refreshes and this issue will remain till we add sort of firebase authentication so that it can remember the state from uh, between refreshes okay all right so we have covered quite a ground here and we have prepared our application correctly for our firebase integration or superbase integration or whatever backend framework you want to use this should fit in this framework really well so thanks for watching and i hope you like this video this overview of uh, adding an authentication a robust authentication system to your angular application hit the like button and as always subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so that i can keep bringing you more videos like this and i'll see you in the next video